What is happening, everyone? I really wish I could just transfer my information and my thoughts directly into your mind. <laughs> you better understand my point of view and everything that led up to my point of view in the same way that I could understand your point of view and everything that led up to your point of view. But we can't do it at the moment. So we will have a look at some pretty interesting stuff. Now, if you've been paying attention to the world and what is around you, you might have seen some of this. You might have stumbled across it. Scientists create matter from nothing in groundbreaking experiment. Now, for many years, basically, you can't create something from nothing. But now they've been able to do it. Well, unless you're the Federal Reserve, you know, and your uh, fiat currency. But that's another story. The theory was produced 70 years ago, and it's been verified uh, as correct. So we really can create matter out of absolutely nothing. Yeah, might be something to pay attention to in, you know, 2022. Uh, we also have, now I'm pretty worried myself because I've got some shit weather going on and I'm the, the pipes are all blocked up and I need to like, Make sure that the uh, the water's still running. Now, anyway, uh, where it needs to go. Remember when there was a massive volcano eruption? And there is some studies, but there hasn't been many studies, basically indicating that volcanoes can affect the weather patterns, and especially when there was a large one, like it was, I think, around this area as well, uh, basically can affect the weather patterns. Also, I think we've got La Nina going on, affecting the uh, climate, hence the climate change. But anyway, this one, I discovered while I was trying to pull up an old article and it says a Tongan island emerges from sea following a volcanic eruption. So a new island has emerged. That is pretty interesting. Maybe that will be the future location of Hexaco. Who knows? Looking at cryptocurrency. It's green, everyone. Bye, bye, bye. God, no. Please don't leverage, don't trade. Oh my God. Maybe DCA in, maybe, but let's have a look what's probably coming. We do have this article here. Again, this in itself is an interesting study. I'll cover it shortly. Warning signs, warning signs. This is me interpreting information being relayed through the internet cables appearing on my screen from a server somewhere. And basically the warning signs are saying multiple, multiply ahead of pivotal Fed meeting. I don't even know what that means. Oh, warning signs multiply. If I read the whole sentence, it would make more sense. <laughs> Yeah, um, further to fall, uh, it's just not looking good. Uh, like I said, I don't want to be doom and gloom, Mr. Doom and gloom, but I don't want to be out here saying, bye, bye, bye. It's a good bye. Definitely, you know, go long, 1000x, do it. Here's my referral link. Like, oof. makes me want to vomit people that do that, to actually profit from that shit as well. Oh my God, I thought to telegram off, but I didn't. Anyway, it's going off. Now we've got this one here. It's a Wall Street Journal article. And on the same topic of like, the market, what is happening, um, I tried to locate this article and it sucked because it was behind a paywall. Tried to do the old um, search. And if you want to, if you really, really want to, you can actually find the same article for free on MSN. So I'm not sure why you would pay for it. But anyway, yeah. Uh, the dollar rise spells trouble for global econ economy. So imagine if you weren't living in the US, or imagine if you are living in the US and you're noticing the prices of everything increasing. Imagine if you didn't have a strong dollar, how much more things would cost. Now that's mind bending because I'm noticing here, uh, if you look at maybe, <laughs> it sounds funny, but you know, the price of ammunition um, sometimes indicates what the economy is like and the supply lines. It's quite high at the moment and it's quite low here in Australia. Now, if you then look at this, it says, I was trying to explain why the dollar's rise um, could be like positive or negative on the whole economy. So what you're seeing currently with the rates rising, the dollar will rise. And basically, if you're not in the US, you're not in the US dollar, um, you're the currency, your currency is buying even less. Um, I think not that long ago, the, uh, no, my telegram is doing that. It's weird. <laughs> not that long ago, uh, you saw the euro lose parity. And for the longest time, the euro was stronger than the US dollar. That would mean, you know, you'd have one dollar, you get about a dollar 20 or something. Um, euro now it's actually like 
parity, loss parity. Um, and this is a trend I've been noticing across the board. So for instance, if I sell some uh, cryptocurrency priced in US dollars, uh, if I price it in Australian dollars, it's actually quite favorable. So I'm not complaining. I'm not selling either because God damn, these prices are bad. But we see here, basically, it explains that the Federal Reserve's aggressive interest rates are increasing, which could, you know, which has been encouraging global investors to pull money out of markets and invest in high yielding US assets. Uh, recent economic data suggests that US inflation remains stubbornly high, strengthening the case for more Fed rate increases and an even stronger dollar. So, stronger dollar, higher rates, lower stock market, lower crypto. Basically, um, you could come to that conclusion. Now, Moving on, we've got, yeah, this guy. Um, I wouldn't mess with Interpol, man. <laughs> he's been red flagged and he's not on the run. Uh, while he maintains reportedly he's not on the run, um, Interpol is has issued a red, red notice. Red notice for Mr. Duquan. All right. That's, I'm pretty sure we know the story about how this guy well, single-handedly led to the, like <laughs> one of the blows of of cryptocurrency, which led to you know um, the f <laughs> the market's low now. And if this hadn't have collapsed, maybe it wouldn't have been as low. But I don't know that for a fact. But it's pretty obvious now. This here I thought was pretty interesting. So I was got I got really bored. I was doing some research and. I thought, well, how better to try and understand the current economy than to have a look in the previous uh, years and what caused the economy to act in the way it did. Now, <laughs> funnily enough, the journal I was looking to, it actually alludes to the fact that no such facts exist that actually tie in the market's movements beyond like someone buying and selling and they even allude to the fact that maybe they're not even sure who was doing the buying and selling for the bonds um at certain exchanges around the world during the time of world war ii but that's there's no actual link between the market movements and world events it says these particular points they pointed out um, statistically may have been driven purely by financial news a narrative so when you get programmed by a tv program by consuming mainstream media that particular talking point of the day which seems to sync up more than often across the board uh because it's factual obviously um all the time they've never got it wrong um, and they'll never you know recall uh data or information but those talking points have been proven to been proven to i'm not sure if they've been proven to research has shown that maybe these talking points have the ability to drive financial markets go figure here's the journal here uh history as reflected uh in capital markets the case of world war ii was trying to find the best performing asset not so clear not so clear um it would have been good if they had a blockchain <laughs> and it would have been good if you know they maintained the blockchain and it was immutable um they don't have that but going forward we do this was a good one as well we <laughs> we had uh around the same time the eu EU Commission from Disclose TV, maybe check it out, give it a follow, I don't know, is seeking emergency powers to force companies to make key products and stockpile goods in a crisis, a draft framework. <laughs> Later stage capitalism, lol. The EU Commission seeks emergency power on supply crisis with threats of fines. So when all else, all else fails, turn to communism? I don't know. <laughs> that is just... The unelected EU has now decided to uh, to enforce emergency powers, like, you know, emergency powers, um, similar to the ones that uh, were rolled out during certain um, pandemics. Moving on on this channel. Now, this, this is pretty interesting. You might want to hear this one. Uh, 
I did come across a video where um, a lawyer basically alluded to a similar, uh, similar statement, similar train of thought. Now, U.S. Appeals Court rejects big tech's right regulate online speech. Basically, the argument is a under the First Amendment in Texas, a court has said that big tech cannot infringe upon the freedom of speech. Obviously not to like incite violence, but just the freedom of speech, you know, here in Australia, I would call it the political freedom of speech, which I openly have. So I'm watching this one closely because I would hate to see big tech censor me because of my political free speech, obviously not because I'm doing something illegal, like inciting violence through your speech, which is, which then you can understand like that should be censored. You know, you don't, you don't want that. But when big tech oversteps the line and does infringe upon the freedom of speech, they, they got some problems. Now it goes on to explain this and mm, I'll read some of the article. A US appeals court on Friday upheld a Texas law that bars large social media companies from banning or censoring users based on viewpoint. A setback for technology industries groups they say that say the measure would turn platforms into base stations of dangerous content. Oh, dangerous content because you're not towing the line of a talking point or narrative, which previously has been proven can affect financial markets. Huh? Go figure. Now, why is that interesting? Because speech, right? Speech, as per dictionary.com, I'm assuming here, Oxford languages, uh, the expression of or the ability to express thoughts and feelings by articulate sounds, you know, a formal address or discourse delivered to an audience. The argument is, which I strongly believe is valid, is blockchains are free speech. Thinking to the pulse sacrifice, the pulse chain sacrifice is creating a set of people that believe speech is a protected human right and blockchains are speech. Sacrifice to prove you believe. We have big tech companies losing their ability to censor free speech so long as it's not inciting violence and blockchain technology is free speech it's a protected human right let that sink in just let that sink in this is what we all sacrifice for this is, this is what i sacrifice for you know simple as that simple as that now moving on putin's bricks new currency could benefit gold and bitcoin analysts the reason i pulled this one up was because here india the talking point of the day is india is the best bet in the global economy says conglomerate executive now you could look into the media outlet uh their talking points their um reporters where they got their information from maybe they have their own uh, agendas i don't know maybe they're leaning politically certain one way or they want to push a certain narrative then that is things in a complex system that can influence a decision and a decision to publish something or not and as we can see before through research it is argued that sometimes the financial news is enough to influence markets that's all I'm going to say on that. Sounds simple, but it gets pretty deep. Um, 
it would require pages and pages and pages and pages and pages of research backed by documentation. Now, I then decided to have a look at the BRICS um, because India being part of BRICS, uh, I think it's Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. Oh, there you go, they've got the flags and their organization and what it's doing. Basically, it says here, um, earlier this summer, Russia, Russian President Vladimir Putin said that Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, BRICS, are developing a new basket-based reserve currency. So it looks as if they're developing something to mirror or try and replace the uh, the old IMF. Um, but I don't understand how that would happen because within the basket of currencies that that holds, uh, US is like 60% uh, and thereabouts, and I think Euro is like 25% thereabouts, and the rest is made up from all these other countries. So I'm not sure how um, these countries would replace something like that. Um, not sure the angle they're going from, but it is something to, you know, um, keep track of in an economy like this, especially in the interesting times we, we are currently in. Now, 